Hello everyone. So myself Pankaj and today we will be looking at what's new in Angular V14. So before we begin, can 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 I know like how many of you are web developer? Nice, nice, quite a good number. So how many of you are working on Angular, in, on on projects? Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so um, basically, in this uh, in this talk, we are going to see what hap what what new came in in Angular version fourteen. Okay. So throughout the talk, we will be going over the feature that have been recently introduced, which is strictly type form, then standalone components, um, page title strategy, which is something related to accessibility, I can say, and then the protected variables, uh, extended developer agnostic, and there is more. So before going into it, I, a little bit about myself, like I'm ex MVP since this year and also an active Angular GD. And also I do contribute on Stack Overflow by giving some answers. So yeah, and you, if you want to follow me, you can uh, follow the handle uh, Pankaj Parker everywhere, like a GitHub or um, uh, Twitter. So yeah, let's get back to the talk. So first thing which we are going to look at is strictly type form. Okay, so in Angular, basically there are two ways to handle a form. One is template driven way and the other one is model driven way, right? And when any form comes into our mind, basically what we do is we accept the input from user, right? And whenever we, it comes to accept input, it can be entity or it can be, it should be in particular form, form right? So we, we think about schema when it comes to form. So suppose I, I want to design a user form in Angular. I may have a schema like this. I may ask a user name and then age and then address that requires another level of detail. Like it can have a city state and postal code. And if you want to write the same in Angular, what you would be doing is you would be using form API. And can you, can you relate something like, see the, the schema that I need is exactly propagated or used in Angular form API. So you can really relate like for each each particular field, you have defined something called as form control, right? And it was working with Angular. And to access the value, what we could do is, you know, we call the form object dot value object. What happens is when you say value, you get the object structure like this. Okay, nice. And then you can do your further operations. Like you have to uh, extract few things, like maybe a restructure, and you can send it to the API call, right? So that's cool. But do you see any error in this code? Any error, like, you know, that should have been caught by TypeScript. So you can see that like on, on line number maybe 18, I should have been caught an error, like saying there is a, there is a address typo, see. So what was the thing? The thing was like with Angular 14 before, you did not have the tightly coupled forms. What I mean is, you know, when using when using TypeScript in the application and the types are not attached tightly, it likes it's like we are disrespecting the forms, like using TypeScript, right? We are just bypassing the type. So in Angular 14, this particular issue have been sorted out. So this was the long standing standing feature. People were asking, we are using something called as TypeScript with forms, but they, they those the, the values that we are extracting are not types if. So what happens now? So Angular introduced this feature and now again, you will be defining same thing, okay? But Angular will make sure that this particular thing is type safe. So basically, you know, when I said use dot value, or you, uh, that particular this dot user form dot value, it will give me an IntelliSense now, okay? So let's, uh, let's go back to the demo a little bit so that you can get a better picture of it. So how many of you uh, know like stack bleeds? So stack, stack bleeds is similar as that of uh, how you use code pane uh, online ID. Okay. So in this, uh, can you see something like this is the same code that I have shown in the slide, right? Now, since this is a TypeScript, it, could have, it should have been caught an error over here. 
so it is not caught and what happened is since we did not caught the error on compile time it it give it gave me an error on run time okay now we want to solve that problem and one more thing which i want to highlight here is if i say like you know user form dot value object see what it represents now any object right let's try the same thing in angular angular 14 so uh before going there uh, i am going to i am going to display you like this is the demo app that that i have created and this is a simple app i for each feature i created a card and once you go in it will go into that feature particular feature specific things okay uh let's move to, move to the vs code to see what exactly i did here yeah. so this is very simple angular application generated by a cli and it has a components folder which has angular components and also service folder which has services and other is app component.ts a standard structure of angular so if i go in inside a particular particular uh, page which is type form feature i land on to the some route so the component name is basically i i followed a convention a component name is kind of same as that of um, the route so if you go back to the code so let me go back to the code and inside a component let me open a type form component okay and if i open the html you will see that i am going to uncomment the same line and see now what happened i did not use anything specific let me uh, remove this first quickly sorry uh, this one and this is the advanced thing more advanced if you want to do so this is same thing what was there in angular 13 now you can see that i can find errors at compile time only and what happens is it does say that the postal code does not exist on partial type city or something similar to it what if i change the name of address field or i mistaken something it gives an error at at compile time itself rather than catching things on uh, run time so this is a very good feature you can you can make it more mature like using the types specifically in this case what happened is in this case you haven't mentioned any types so typescript somehow inferred the types what i mean by inferred so when you click on see on value see what happened now that schema of type name age address automatically populated using typescript that automatically magi done by typescript and if you want to make it more advanced then you can define your own type like like i did here i created a type called as user form and i assigned a type over there see i said that a form control can be of type something so it's like i'm using generics now in front of a class and i'm making sure that the things are very type specific so that was it about the about the uh, you know going towards the uh, towards the uh, strongly type form right now now the question is let me switch off this mic now the question is how i can make sure see uh, in big application a change something like this can make a huge problem you cannot migrate a code within a day like you know uh, you would be getting so many typing error if you just move to this form control api like the just upgrade so how can i i make sure that i should be backward compatible so in that case angular made sure that they made it backward compatible just by uh you know uh sorry this one we just visited so fallback way is just mention that instead of form control you would be saying untyped form control so there are three methods basically one is form control form group and form array so instead of writing them just write untyped before that and import that class so you are you will be getting the the former functionality which was used to be there before angular 14 So yeah, that was the strictly type form. Uh, the next thing is one of the biggest feature that has been uh, came in Angular version v14 is standalone components. What is standalone component? So basically, yeah, one more disclaimer that I want to give is this is not a not a final API that is ready. It is in developer preview. So people are using it and trying it out. 
it may release in v4 v15 or somewhere around uh, v15 only maybe in 6 months so what is the stand alone component so those who are working on angular uh, projects they know that ng module is one of the biggest uh, thing like you know you have to learn and people do feel that hey why we should learn ng module and why we know that we can just use component like how we do it in react and view right so this is one of the step towards removing that ng module overhead and then the component can be defined without ng module that is the thing uh, what you have to do is to define a new stand alone component using cli you just have to call some cli method called as ng generate component and and to that pass a stand alone flag okay so that will make sure that the component is generated and one thing you should notice here is it has two different things so basically these are the two different things that generally wasn't there before when it comes to a generation of component so what are these things like a stand alone true flag what it make sure is the component will be will be no need to require to define in inside ng module and the imports any guess why this import came here because uh, you know when it comes to angular whenever you are depend on some other module those module or component has to be come inside the imports of ng module but now those imports can come inside a component itself okay and like a common module and other component like that so uh, we will come to the demo part of it like how we will be utilizing this feature in some in some time later so those who don't know how angular works internally this is just a brief idea how it works so we used to have something called as ng module and it contains so many things like it can contain component pipes then services then directives and what not okay and also it can also contain other modules as well okay and it has main component called as root component like each application have a root right when it comes to defining any app in react also you define you mount a root app, a root component right and then the, then the application begins so over here in angular also we have a app component or root component that is the initial uh, tree uh, you know uh, entry point of application so the ng module something looks like this it's just a class but on top of the class we use angular um, uh, what is this angular annotation or you can say a direct uh, uh, what is it a, a, a declarative way of defining angular so it's a decorator ng module and in that we pass some information okay and what we do is this is the module we we run on on the browser so to run it in main.ts we call something called as a platform browser dynamic method and we bootstrap a module so that angular application can bootstrap and everything will run on the browser now now people will think hey we had a compo uh, module only and based on that we were bootstrapping application now how that will work with stand alone components right so that's interesting part like now we have some method called as bootstrap application method what it does is basically suppose this is the ng module that we have okay and we want to bootstrap this application so what will happen is now first thing what we have to do is we have to convert the app component or root component into stand alone component so two thing two things you have to make sure the component uh, to make sure the component is stand alone what it is a stand alone colon true property and the imports okay okay so th those two things have been added and later part you will be changing the main.ts part from a uh, bootstrap module to bootstrap application okay one method now what you have to do is you have to pass the root component which have been mentioned in bootstrap array to where the first parameter of bootstrap application method and then the next parameter will be imports those imports will be go inside the next parameter where we will be calling them as a provider and we will call some special method import providers from and we will get those uh, that you know the complete array shifted to to that a uh, parameter of import providers from and that's it that's it this is how you will be 
initializing your application and you don't have to uh, remember the ng module learning of ng module uh, cool so can we uh, so you know as as this code went on like let me demo you how this can be happen in actual code okay so yeah so i'm switching back to vs code and making sure that things are running in the browser so this was the demo application and uh, you can see that it's still running no no worries but let me go to the app module.ts so app module.ts is very uh, simple one which has a declaration imports and a bootstrap component like we we have seen right it was here just to make sure okay and now we want to move uh, and we also want to see main.ts right what main.ts has this one this particular line a bootstrap module then app module now we have to get rid of app module how can we do that so let's do one thing let's comment out this part uh, so uh, i will also expand this the win uh, the the bottom window where i did ng serve to serve the application so as soon as i do that it will start it may start throwing an error okay let me rerun this so what will happen see oh wait ng serve platform browser dynamic wait a minute main dot ts app module dot ts okay let me see what's happening on the browser it throws an error but nothing happening am i connected yeah let me see what happened what went wrong let me stop this again npm start oh something is this should have been thrown an error because application is also not running ah uh, not sure what exactly went wrong but let's let's move ahead and um uh, it will am i running the application rightly because so things are not happening and it also throws an error let me restart the visual studio quickly that will help maybe sorry about the glitch yeah npm start oh something is going crazy <laughs> okay okay so in browser it, it is throwing an error but it, over here it's not uh, what can be done so yeah let's let's keep that part then i mean i don't want to waste time i don't know something is wrong the browser is working fine but somehow visual studio is com not complaining uh let me let me revert everything and let's see what happens nothing maybe something is wrong not sure okay let it be so i will stick with the with the with the slide only so basically this was the way to move move ahead with the standalone component way to migrate it and the later part is yeah now the question comes to mind like how how things will work ahead like how we can extend this thing like how the routing will work how how we can provide a dependencies on run time and what not so to think about routing what will happen is how how routing used to work 
in in case if you want to configure something on route you just have to say a routes constant where you mention path a key value pair of path and component so path and which component has to be loaded so this is fine this is how we used to do but how the lazy loading component will work you know it it does not have a a a, a stand alone comp a, a module right we used to do load children now what will happen so now we will have new method called as load component it works similarly as that of load children what you have to pass is just pass the path of your component and import it see we just use the es6 import statement and uh, from that we just uh, took the inside a dot then we just took the uh, the way, the particular instance of a component which is stand stand alone lazy component right Le let's move these things little bit further and let's see how the lazy stand alone component and its children routes would work this is another thing which could be challenging right so to tackle that situation same thing on route level you can mention the child routes uh, using a property called as children and you have to follow the same pattern if something has to be loaded lazily just mention the path and then inside load component you can mention uh, uh sorry this should be instead of component it should be load component line number 8 and 13 uh, you can mention a import and load the component specifically um uh, that is how you can go for the uh, lazy loaded route in children uh, it the children routes lazily loaded now what about other things like i was just talking about components 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 so you can make directive and pipes as a stand alone as well like you just have to add a stand alone colon true property there and if your directive or uh, or or a pipe is depend on any other services just add them inside a import block okay and that way it can be a stand alone as well uh next one is pretty interesting uh page title strategy generally what happens is we have so many pages on the ui right and we want to make sure that the page title you know the browser window title has to be refreshed when we visit a particular pages with angular it has become easy uh i think this feature has introduced earlier than v14 but i will show you a progression what happened in v14 so just you have to mention a title uh, property on route additionally okay this will make sure that when you visit a dashboard route dashboard route or type from route it will change the window title accordingly okay let's move little bit ahead this is this is very simple now how the dynamic title will work you know this was one of the biggest challenge that people do face in case of web application router supposed to fetch a title and set it dynamically so now on title property you can mention a service okay that service should look little bit of like this it should implement a resolve function when you when you implement that service uh, and inside a resolve function you have to make sure that it should return a string okay what i mean by string is suppose this case what i did is i want to i want to make one ajax call and based on the output of that ajax call i want to set a title so this this particular change or service implementation will, will make sure that i see over here i'm using just a, a a normal fetch way of doing ajax call and once the response comes in i await for the response and once the response comes comes in i just return the title from there so it that dynamically sets the title whatever uh, whatever have been there okay so that was it about how we can set the title dynamically now no need to go for a different uh, a different plugin or something like that you know people used to do something called as a breadcrumb plugins to manage this not breadcrumb plugins a route plugins to manage this now uh, again one more thing so you know uh, there should be a global page level title strategy what i mean by that is suppose you are opening up a jira application or any application what it has is uh, before i need title you will see the application name like jira then pipe and then whatever page it is in right so you may have to also do a global uh, level page page title strategy right so for that what you will do is you again have to define a service where you will extend a title strategy object or class 
okay and what will happen inside that you just have to override update title method see the implementation is very easy what i am doing is on line number 8 i am just building a title okay getting the original title okay and i am amending it but just by pre uh, on line number 10 you can see that i faced the original title on line number 8 and on line number uh, uh, 10 i amended it with angular 14 tag and just i use the title that came from maybe a uh, route route configuration okay so this comes under the umbrella of accessibility you know it it has to be there so that was about the page title strategy and how you can mention this page title strategy inside a providers array of either app module or your bootstrap application providers array you know in both way so just you have to say that i am going to provide a title strategy and pass on your uh, say that use classes title strategy service which you just created cool uh, next thing i am moving on to a protected variable earlier on angular templates you won't be able, able to use protected variables uh, like what is protected variable uh, so basically this is access uh, is modifier like what it does is it says that a current class and its de descendant can use the property right other other ones can't so uh, in this case this wasn't being used on the template this version has solved that thing and this has been benefited so many third party libraries to to do a inheritance kind of component and do this easily otherwise you know the work around for this was making that variable public and that wasn't good um this is coming to the next feature is coming to the extended developer diagnostic what it mean by is uh, you know based on company standard we we do follow some uh, coding practices right like some do follow to uh, have a arrow function with parameter always and something like that so this extended developer diagnostic you can provide this configuration in tsconfig.json to enable some diagnostic that you want to enable right now there are two di diagnostic that has been there so one is invalid banana in the box uh, uh, syntax right now if you before angular 13 if you make any mistake with banana in the box syntax which is you know ng model ng model syntax it has a uh, it has a parenthesis then square bracket around uh, a directive so if you re re uh, i mean if you do other way around it wasn't used to throw an error but with angular 14 it will and if you want to disable that you can just disable it by saying instead of error just say suppress it will it will uh, you know uh, suppress that error same for nullish coilsing and other features so this was one of the good uh, good uh, thing that have been added and this will improve so what happening with angular 14.1 there are a few more diagnostic that have been added and that you can use right now the next is uh, typescript 4.7 is now supported with angular uh, 14 version which is the latest one and also um, uh, there are some something internally related with injector template like embedded view we can create an embedded view using two things right now in using template ref and ng template and you know ng container so um, so that method you can additionally pass a injector object so injector object is kind of context with respect to what it should work so same thing with view container ref and template ref these two things have been added and this has been taken a benefit inside the angular cdk api uh, which which is going to be a next slide now angular cdk is uh, uh, api has a primitives for drop down and dialog sorry menu and drop down these two things so what you can do is and also earlier it used to have a dialog Uh, dialog api as well so what what you can do is most of the basic things uh, of uh, api development has been done by angular team if you want to extend them just do use angular cdk api use that basic things and extend it as per your organization standard and look and feel so same way they have provided some option to uh, do uh, extend the api using drop down and menu things so that was it and 
this is the last feature that I would like to mention here is inject feature. So there is one inject API that recently got introduced. Maybe those one who are not working on Angular also this you will you may find this interesting. So maybe uh, put attention over this. So what this inject API does? So basically this inject API is one of the way to extract a dependency. In Angular, what is the way of extracting dependency right now? You have to put dependency inside constructor, right? That's the way you can extract a dependency. But with this inject API, it becomes little lazy. So let's take an example. So suppose I want to use a dependency call A. How you would do that? In constructor, you will add that dependency, right? I will I will declare an object A. And when we say colon A, it is a type of the object, it automatically makes sure that when, the, when this component is instantiated, the dependency will be fetched. Now see the interesting thing. With Angular 14, you can just say this, A is equal to inject A. You don't have to define constructors now. It will just fetch the object or, or the dependency instance. There is other way also where you can do uh, this other way around, like define an instance first and later assign it inside a constructor. Same thing. Uh, OK, but the, the next one is not possible. Make sure that you don't do that. If you are using this feature, you cannot use this inject API inside a lifecycle hook or any other method. You have to either use it on the uh, shallow level of your component class or inside a constructor other way you you cannot use it okay so you must be thinking what is the use of this you know we used to do uh, get a dependency inst in, in injection using constructor now it's other way around so how how what's the what's the thing so let's come to that um, um some people do follow inheritance pattern to create their component right in angular it was little bit uh, not a problematic, but a little bit cumbersome to follow the instance and pass on the dependency. So take an example of this component component. So I have created a base directive, base class directive, and it uses a dependent dependency called as private a dependency. Okay. Now I have another component called as CMP component, which extends base class and it requires a dependency called as B, B dependency. But see what happens. That component who, who is a who is a child, he has to make sure that it also makes sure that it is injecting two things. One is B dependency, see first parameter, and the second parameter A dependency. And when it comes to calling the base class, it pass that dependency object from the child class. And I, for example, I gave this as a simple two parameters. It can be three or four level nested as well with four and five dependency. And this was becoming like, you know, we are very tightly coupled in terms of inheritance. So, so using this inject API, see how it will look like. Now in base class, you just have to say a inject a method and the parent, the child component has to just, uh, you know, care about what the parent component is using. So over here, we are just doing some kind of segregation. The, we are removing the tight, tightly coupling part. So this is very nice. Okay, now, now, uh, now, uh, you know, be attention. See what the next part is going to be amazing. Now people go ahead from the community and try to bring out something out of it. Okay, and uh, something like this. So what this? First, I will explain the example, and later I will come to the part what they did. So see, what they did is. The template has state counter as a variable. Okay. And inside component, they just said state is equal to inject state and just pass a state like some object. It's like React only or view only, right? View uses ref variable. In React, we used to have a this dot set state or something like that. Right now it's use state. Okay. So something like that. We define an initial state and an object on and look at the line number 14. It has a function called as increment. OK. And once you click on the increment button, which is on line number five, not five, six. See what happening on click it calls the increment button. 
uh, button function which is on 14 and increment the counter so don't you get a feel of using react or view here somewhere like that like you know uh, so what happening happening is maybe a react guy can think of inject state is kind of use state or maybe a view guy can think of uh, inject state as a ref and and because of this people came to this approach and maybe in future there could be some plugins around this or or something similar like that maybe Ang angular may move in different direction in terms of how the how the binding happens so let me show this demo in action so i'm using typescript here let me zoom in a little bit so this is the same code that i have shown you and this is the uh, viewing part see without any issue it works fine and i do a reset what i just did is i just called the inject state function and if you want to look at how that inject state function looks like see what it has it's just a function plain javascript function what exactly it is doing is it is calling on line number 5 inject api to get a reference of change detector detector ref if if you would have been doing inside a component you will be adding inside a constructor private cd colon change detector ref you just did this way now and then on the next part there is one api called as rx state or you can use other apis as well and just we created instance of it and when something happens we just wrote some code to make sure that change detection happens and on destroy the hook get destroyed the component get destroyed right so this is the just thing like and this way angular is moving ahead in terms of uh, going to uh, have ng module less things like maybe um, what will what could happen is i'm just uh, it's my uh, opinion about this maybe there will be only components those will be scattered for angular application like uh, like other frameworks or libraries have and you will be iso isol i mean you will be using them isolated away because using standalone component they are standalone like earlier they they did not used to be the standalone meaning their dependencies are inside the inside the imports array of that particular component itself so now the angular component can be called as isolated in proper manner i can say and maybe the things will change like maybe a use state kind of things may come in or maybe something else and the paradigm may change in future so what else i have the demo i can share yeah and i think so yeah that's it so i will encourage like if you get a time do have a look at uh, these features i will share the demo as well and uh, do do give a try about it only the thing which i would like to mention about uh, angular um, standalone components is don't use it on a production yet it will be it is not ready to use it on a production uh, it may be after a few months but yeah it will be there and it is moving in, moving in right direction so yeah thanks thanks about uh, listening and yeah thank you so if anybody have question maybe i can take one or two questions uh, okay this is not just a problem with angular but like many other frameworks as well like um in your opinion like are there any like elegant ways to maybe detect circular dependencies or maybe like try to solve it especially with inject that you've just mentioned right circular dependencies are bound to happen if you're not careful yeah so what's your opinion on it yeah so yeah that was a good question so basically circular dependency is framework independent so what my opinion on that is uh, in angular if you run the application it it mostly tell you uh, when you run the production build it tells you where the circular dependency is exactly happening uh, now i can tell you about circular dependency uh, one thing uh, even though there is a circular dependency in your any of the framework app it won't stop you shipping it to production only it will warn you uh, the thing is 
uh, with JavaScript, I don't know, but with with uh, server side programming like C sharp or Java, maybe when you when you are using dependency injection or similar kind of context, um, you will see that they will throw an error at the build time mostly, and they won't allow you to proceed. Um, so what I feel is about dependency injection. Maybe this should have been mandatory in terms of having it on on the build time, so that you make sure that you are not not going towards the that infinite loop or you know calling one dependency to other starvation problem or something like that. And also, it again come back to you uh, if if that's implemented. It again it will come back to you, and you have to think about. How you should be designing your application, or how you should be segregating your dependencies. Uh, uh, there you may suffer because uh, the dependency is like you know a child dependency should be only be consumed. Some dependency just to be consumed. They should not call other dependency, and you will you will have to follow. You have to stick with some pattern or maybe maybe some decision, and that you have to follow throughout so that you you won't be visiting that problem. So yeah. Uh. Um. Hi. Yeah. So uh, is with regards to the dependency injection that you showed us now with inject. Uh, it's not related to Angular, but I find that pattern when you do direct uh dependency injection without defining it on your parameters on. Or composing with your function, or like defining your constructor, it makes it harder to write unit tests because you can't switch between. Let's say your interface A, you can't switch between your mock implementation and your real implementation implementation. So, do you have any strategy on like how to write unit tests with that kind of uh, dependency injection? Sure. Yeah, that's good thing. I think you are following Angular pretty good. So the thing is, with that pattern, community is still evolving. How to test the pattern that I just show? The problem is there is a difficulty to mock objects or spy objects when it comes to using the inject pattern, calling inject method and passing the uh, uh, the dependency name in the as a function parameter. So uh, I think so. It is going to be uh, so. Right now, the way is using something called as test bed of Angular, and you have to do few more things to call override method and all. But that's not good thing to do in application. So it is going to evolve in future, and Angular team is working on, uh, you know, uh, finding some good way, good patterns that people can use uh, before the before this standalone components come out uh, from developer preview. So yeah, this is going. Uh, yeah, this was the problem still. We don't have a proper solution because this inject API just now came, and we are making it mature by having people are people from community are lo are looking at it. So yeah.